this video I'm just going to be going over how you can test for the assumptions required for an independent samples t-test and if those assumptions are not met how you can proceed with a non-parametric test. Alright so in this fictitious data set we have 34 participants in two groups taking one test. So this is a fictitious data set so the test they're taking is the social science schizophrenic scale and the outcome, the categorical outcome variable is whether they are schizophrenic individuals or not, schizoph not schizophrenic individuals. And the hypoth hypothetical test that we're going to be, or the hypothetical question we're going to be trying to answer is whether there is a difference in the score of the social science schizophrenic scale between schizophrenic individuals and non schizophrenic individuals diagnosed of course by a professional psychiatrist. The two assumptions that are most important and which we're going to be testing are the homogeneity of variance and normality of the distribution of the data. So there's a few ways that you can go about testing these assumptions. The first is just to do a general descriptive analysis of the results and look at the means for the normal distribution or to give an indication of the normal distribution and the standard deviations to give an indication of the variance between the two groups. So we're just going to go quickly data split file and split the outcome of the descriptives between the categorical group variable, so between schizophrenics and non-schizophrenics. Minimize that, go to descriptives and then yeah, already did it but you can just move the score the continuous variable to the variable box that we're going to be conducting the descriptive analysis on. Make sure that your mean and standard deviations are um, your mean and standard deviations are ticked. You can also include the variance, but remember the standard deviation and the variance are basically the same thing. It's just either the variance square rooted into a standard deviation or the standard deviation squared into variance. So we'll just click OK and then here we can see that the non-schizophrenic non group has 11 participants and the schizophrenic group has 23 participants. So just looking at that distribution of participants in the group we can kind of start to see that the groups are not really normally distributed or it's more likely that they'll be less likely to be normally distributed because of the discrepancies between the group sizes. And then importantly here we can look at the mean. So the mean for the non-schizophrenic group on the social science schizophrenic scale is 13.9 while the schizophrenic scored 41.34. So those means are not are very far away from each other, right? So they're not really normal, or they're not really normally aligned. But we can investigate that illustratively a bit. And for the variance, we can see that there's quite a large difference in both standard deviation and variance, but more evidence than variance because it's obviously squared. We can see that the variance of non-schizophrenics is 6 and the variance of schizophrenic group is 82, with standard deviation of 2.5 for non-schizophrenics non and 9 for the schizophrenic group. Right, so that just gives us an, our first indicator that, or our first sign that these that the groups are not really do not really meet these assumptions. So we can also further investigate the normal distribution by creating a box plot of the data. I just want to reset the data split. So here we would just go to graphs, have a look, go to the box plot section, drag in a simple box plot, make the outcome on the x-axis, which is the groupings, and the score on the y-axis, and we just leave it at that. And we can have a look quickly here, and we can see we can see from this graph that the distributions of these two groups are very far away from each other, so that's not normally distributed. Now we can go further and confirm statistically the homogeneity test in SPSS by just running an independent samples test quickly. So here we have our our score, our continuous variable and our test variable and our outcome and our categorical variable in the grouping variable box 
defining them as one and two, because that's how I coded them. This options here, we don't really need to do too much about that. You can bootstrap if you want to get an exact score, but it's not really relevant for this little tutorial. So you can just click OK and run it. And the group statistics is basically the descriptive stats we did earlier, so they won't change. But importantly, in this independent samples test block, is looking at the Levine's test of the quality of variances. So basically what Levine's test is, so it tests the hypothesis that there is an equal level of variance between these two groups, that the variance is homogeneous. So the null hypothesis for this test would be that there is equal variance between the groups. So if Levine's test is significant, that means that the null hypothesis of homogeneity of variance must be rejected. So it's a bit of a reverse type of statistic. So even though our statistical significance between the schizophrenic and non-schizophrenic group is significant, quite very significant, we can't really use this test because of those violated assumptions. So Levine's test basically confirmed for us that homogeneity of variance is violated and even if the groups are normally distributed, which as we can see that they're not, we would still need to proceed to a non-parametric alternative, which in this case is a Mann-Whitney U test. So we, to conduct a Mann-Whitney U, we'll just go to Analyze, Non-Parametric. It can either go Independent Samples here, or we can go to Legacy Dialogues and go K or Two Independent Samples, because we have two groups. So again, we would put our score on the test variable and the dependent variable list, and we could, and we would put our outcome variable and the grouping variable. Again, define our groups as one and two because that's how they were coded. And while there are multiple options here that we can choose from, the most commonly used and generally an acceptable test is the Mann or Whitney U test. So the difference between the independent samples test and the Mann Whitney U is how they treat the data. In the independent samples test, you would add up all of the scores and, and get the, the mean or average score and between the two groups and test those along with standard deviations. While in the Man Whitney U test, all elements of the data are first ranked. And then the mean rank score of all the elements of the, is then added up in a similar fashion towards how the independent samples test treats the, the mean. So once we've set this up, Again, you can go to options to get to descriptives and whatnot, but descriptives will stay the same regardless of how we treat or which test we would use. And then we just click OK. So here we can see that our test is statistically significant. You get the both one-tailed and two-tailed six. And the primary scores you're going to be looking at are the z-score and secondarily you can look at the man would you score and the Wilcoxon w and yeah that's it for this little video if this video helped you in any way or form please give the video a like and even consider subscribing to the channel it helps and stuff thanks